This problem involves work done by constant forces, including friction. Take a moment to pause the video and read the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, let's look at what's being asked. You're being asked to find the total work done on the box. And some of the information that's provided includes the mass of the box, the distance through which the box has been moved, the size of the force that's pushing the box, and some information about friction being present. So let's begin by drawing a diagram of the situation. Here's our horizontal surface. It's rough, we're told. That indicates, of course, that there's going to be a friction force. Here's our box resting on that surface. It's a 40 kilogram box, and it moves along 5 meters, ending up at a different position. And that's 5 meters along there, and it's being pushed along by a 130 newton force. The question's asking us about the work that's being done on the box. So what do we understand by work? Work is done by a force, and it has to do with the force and the displacement through which the object moves whilst that force is being applied. Importantly, work is not a vector, but it involves two vector quantities, the force and the displacement change. And we can write that dot product as the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement change multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement change. Since we're going to be dealing with forces, it might be useful to draw a free body diagram. Here's our box, and let's identify all the forces that are acting upon it. The one we normally think of first off is the gravitational force pulling down with the weight of the box. The box is resting on a surface, so there'll be a normal force pushing up on the box. We're told in the question the box is being pushed along with a constant applied force. So let's just write that in there as the applied force. We're also told it's a rough surface with a coefficient of friction. So there will be a friction force opposing that motion. Looking at the question and the diagram, these are all the forces that are being applied to the box in this particular situation. What we want is the total force being applied to the box. And the nice thing about work is it's a scalar quantity, so it's simply the sum of the work done by all of the forces. The work done by the normal force, plus the work done by the gravitational force, plus the work done by the applied force, plus the work done by the frictional force. So we should be able to calculate each of these works separately, and then add them up to find the total work being done. There's a couple here that are quite easy to calculate. For example, the work done by the normal force here will actually turn out to be zero. There are a couple of ways to think about this. The normal force acts vertically, but the box is moving along horizontally. Remember, our change in displacement vector is horizontal. This means that the angle between the force and the displacement vector is here 90 degrees. And the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Often we just think about that if a force is at right angles to the displacement, it does no work. And for the same reason, we can see that the work done by the gravitational force will also be zero. The angle there is also 90 degrees. What about the work that is done by the applied force? Well, now it will be equal to the magnitude of the applied force multiplied by the displacement change multiplied by the cosine of the angle, which in this case that will be 1, because in this particular instance the applied force is exactly parallel to the displacement change. So the angle here is 0 degrees and the cosine of 0 degrees is 1. Putting numbers into this, we have our applied force of 130 newtons times our displacement change of 5 meters times 1 gives us the work done by the applied force 650 joules, joules being the unit for work. Now the final force to consider, the work done by friction. This will be the magnitude of the friction force times the displacement change, and it will actually be 
minus that. And again, that's because the angle between these two vectors is actually 180 degrees. Our friction force is pointing backwards compared to our displacement change, which is pointing forwards. Another way to think about this is that whenever the force is in the opposite direction to the motion, that means negative work is being done. Now, we need to think about the size of this friction force. It will, of course, be the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force, and, of course, that's going to be multiplied by the displacement to give the work that's being done. What's the size of the normal force? Well, in this problem, the normal force and the weight force are the only two vertical forces acting, and we know that there is no vertical acceleration. Our box is only moving horizontally here. That means the normal force and the weight force must be exactly balanced, so our normal force must have the same size as our weight force. And now we can put numbers into here. The coefficient is 0.3. The mass of the box is 40 kilograms, g is 9.8, and our displacement change is 5 meters. And when we put that into our calculator, we get minus 588 joules. That's how much work friction did on the box as it moved along 5 meters. So now we have the work done by each of the four forces, so we can now calculate the total work that's being done on the box zero work by the normal force, zero work by the weight force, 650 joules by the applied force, minus 588 joules by the friction force, and that all combines to give us a total work of 62 joules done on the box.